Those of you who have seen my other extruder review videos will know that I have a checklist of traits that I'm looking for in the perfect extruder in my mind. And those traits don't exist yet. I have not found the perfect extruder. The Bontech LGX here comes darn close, except for two things that bug me about it. First of all, it's got um, plastic gears. Now they are made out of POM, P-O-M, and that's a very high temperature, very tough plastic, but uh, they're still plastic. And uh, to me, that means that if you get them too hot, they'll warp or they'll do funny things, but how hot is too hot? And for my enclosure that I made, I'm getting up to about 75 degrees, maybe 110 degrees at max. And those palm gears, I'm told by the engineers, very smart guys who graduated engineering school who can do all the math and all the simulations and all that. And they're telling me that palm is just fine. Don't worry about it. So I trust them, but I still want metal. It's an emotional thing, you know? It's not, it's not reasonable. Uh, and the other thing that bugs me about this extruder is the fact that it is really quite hefty. But Bontech already has a, a solution to that. They made a lightweight version of this, which I need to get into my hands. So they've already solved, solved their own problem there. And yeah, the engineers working with this company are just fantastic. So of course they're gonna do amazing work. And my suspicion is that the, the lightweight version of this is gonna be the best extruder design that I've ever seen. But extruder design is only half of it. Extruder is the sort of mechanism that pushes the filament through. The other half of it is the hot end design. And Bontech and Slice Engineering have teamed up. So you'll see here I have the, um, what is it, the copperhead um, the whole system attached to the LGX, but the really truly fantastic design made by Slice Engineering is the Mosquito. Nothing beats this. It is just phenomenal. So a Mosquito hot end with the new, what is that fancy CHT nozzle from Bontech. So yeah, Bontech technology combined with Slice Engineering technology, it's just, it's a total winner. But I still wanna see that all metal construction. I really do. I thought that I was going to get what I wanted with the uh, NF Sunrise here, but nope, the gears are made out of plastic. Classic, so uh, no dice there. But you can imagine my surprise the other day when I was on AliExpress and this popped up. Look at this, it looks like a Bontech knockoff kind of. But see, here's the thing, China copycat. That's what they do, right? But I've been encouraging China to take these Western designs that they're gonna copycat and just tweak them a little bit. Just change them a little and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll lay off. I won't criticize them for being just clones, just control C, control V. And that's what this looks like. It looks like the Bontech BMG, the original Bontech extruder, which is not nearly as good as the new LGX, but you know, still they're taking some great solid uh, Western engineering and they're adapting it. They're changing it up. And this looks really cool. Look, metal gears and the um, hot block there is gonna be copper, which is the same as the slice engineering hot blocks on both the mosquito and the um, the copper head. So that's fantastic. Like we are looking like, yeah, it's closely, closely derivative of work done by these two amazing, um, you know, Western engineers, one in Sweden and one in the United States and Florida. So, hey, you're taking some great lessons learned from the West and adapting them, but still making your own product is what it looks like. And I am just super, Super excited for this. It looks like everything I've been asking for in an extruder. So of course I had to buy it and where'd it go? Here it is right here. So yeah, I got it. I paid my 60 bucks. Let's put it through its paces and see if it does what I think that combination of traits will achieve. And the first test is going to be the max extrusion test. Speed rate 300, hot end temperature 220. There was a skip. Feed rate 295, hot and temperature 220. No skips. 295 millimeters per minute is the feed rate of the extruder as it's squeezing the 1.75 millimeter filament up here. So I'll flash the math on the screen to prove that that equates to 150 millimeters per second in the X and Y movement. So how fast do you typically print? Probably somewhere between 40 and 75 millimeters per second. So 150 is gonna be about twice the print speed that most of us are using on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's more than enough, but still uh, the second lowest feed rate that I achieved on any of the uh, extruders that I've reviewed so far. So what's up with that? Well, uh, it has nothing to do with cooling because look at how I use this like super burly cooling fan. And even though that's a really small little hole there, it's a nice 
copper heat sink, so that should really strip the heat away quite well. So I, I, I think that I'm getting enough cooling, and uh, cooling could potentially um, slow your feed rate down if you were getting heat creep. In other words, if the heat was bleeding from down here in the hot block underneath the, uh, the silicone boot here, and it was bleeding all the way up there into where the heat sink is, the filament coming through there would be getting hot and molten way up too high, and that means that you're going to have a lot of resistance in the filament path before it gets to the nozzle. But that's clearly not what's going on, uh, as illustrated by the fact that I was getting my skips right near the very end of my 100 millimeter extrusion test. So um, it, was, it was starting to skip after the nozzle down here was cooling off from having filament fed through it so quickly. So that tends to indicate that either the hot block is made out of some substandard alloy, which does not transmit the heat quickly enough to the nozzle, or alternately, the um, heating element is separated too far from the nozzle. That kind of looks like um, a bit more separation than you're seeing here on the, um, what is it, the, the copperhead hot block right there. That's quite a substantial bit closer, so you're going to get better heat transfer. And you can see those sort of standoffs, and that's the reason that the, the cartridge is, is sitting farther away from the nozzle, because they had to make room for the standoffs to mount in there somehow. So... Uh, that's part of the problem, or perhaps the nozzle itself here is made out of some inferior alloy, some brass alloy that's not as good at transmitting um, heat as the uh, as the, the nozzles that I've used uh, in, pre in previous tests, and other like like this one here. Maybe maybe that's a better oh, look. It's shinier, <laughs> so maybe that's a better alloy that transmits heat better. At any rate, from what I've seen, I'm diagnosing the problem as being a transmission of heat issue. So uh, there are a number of solutions, but none of them are you going to DIY. So this is a lost cause as far as getting it to print faster goes. But that doesn't really matter all that much because with the fan here, 299 grams, and the previous record holder for weight here was um, 286 grams. So this is now the heaviest extruder that I've ever reviewed. So not only is it the second slowest extruder, it's also the heaviest. This thing is just not doing well. <laughs> However, when we start to disassemble this, we see the best feature and the most unique thing that I've seen on this extruder. The little silicone spacer mat right here. This is fantastic. And the reason it's so good is because it allows just a slight bit of flex. So that drive gear here will no longer bind against the other metal gears in the extruder. If you guys recall from my BQH2 extruder reviews, I was getting massive binding issues. Oh, look at I even got a little bit of it just there. So these gears here, um, they catch at certain points. And that's just because of an unalignment, a misalignment between in the gear train somewhere. So most likely that comes from the fact that there's no precise way to locate the stepper motor. So yeah, you're just going to have issues, but this solves those issues. What a fantastic solution, and I can't wait to see that on a better uh, hot-end extruder design in the future, because I think that that is a total winner. Maybe it's a patch. I guess you could also kind of see it as a patch. If you just get your engineering tolerances uh, you know, dialed in better, then you wouldn't have to use something like this, but it's so inexpensive, and that gear train is really just just smooth like it's buttery smooth you guys it's fantastic so um just massive props for that idea little creativity or whatever it is problem solving uh i, I have never seen that on a western design so there is one example that you know proves me wrong when i say that they cannot innovate or or come up with unique solutions in china well hey there's a counter example right there so good on you guys for coming up with that digging into this a little bit further we can see the texture on the uh, metal body of the extruder, and that indicates to me that these are MIM parts, metal injection molded. So they started out as um, metal particles, powdered metal embedded in plastic, which was injection molded, just like you know all the other plastic parts that we ever see from anywhere. And after th that process, you have a plastic part, basically, and you stick it in an oven, an autoclave, and you bake the plastic out of it, and you get it hot enough to where the metal centers together. So the little particles sort of bond to the particles next door. It's not quite as strong as solid metal, but it's still darn strong, and it has most of the other properties that metal would have. So that's why we're getting such a clean and inexpensive 
body here is that that use of that um, you know high production, low cost. Um, it, the tooling is expensive to, to to get the first one off the assembly line is pretty inexpensive, but after that it's pretty cheap. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely cast. There's the metal gear, and I've examined this up close with the magnifying glass here, even the uh, the 10x magnifying glass, and I'm seeing like um, sanding marks on this face. And this face here has much tighter sort of concentric lines in it. But you guys can see what looks like flash over there by my fingernail. But I think that's just like um, an edge from the sanding disc that sort of smeared some of that metal over the hole. That needs to be deburred for sure uh, to be high, high quality. I'm feeling a serious burr here on the teeth on the backside. So this would have benefited from being sanded as well on the backside. But most likely this gear was made in a compression process where they put the powdered metal with a little bit of binder agent and they compress it down to make the blank and then they stick that powdered metal in the sintering oven just as well. So this is not going to be nearly as strong as a steel gear that was machined, but hey, it's just an extruder. The forces going through it are not that extreme. The reason we want metal gears is for the, um, the longevity, the wear resistance, and the resistance to deformation in a heated chamber, a heated environment. So as evidenced by the buttery smooth movement of the drivetrain here, which is every bit as smooth as the Bontech LGX, which has those plastic gears. And the plastic gears uh, you know, facilitate a buttery smooth drivetrain. So they've done a good job um, making everything function well, uh, except for that, that hot end there and the weight, the weight. Oh. All right, now let's talk about this heat sink made out of copper, this tube here, presumably made out of stainless steel, then these four standoffs and the copper hot block. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm gonna say that there is definitely some patent infringement happening here. Look at, we have four standoffs, a stainless steel tube for the heat break, a copper heat sink, and that stainless steel tube continues through the heat sink and goes on up there. Here, We'll take this apart further in a minute, but you'll see that that stainless steel tube continues up there as well. So I'm betting that this uh, should have been stopped at the port as patent infringement uh, you know, it's, it's a knockoff of the Slice Engineering Mosquito Hot End. And it doesn't even perform as good as the Copperhead, which is like the lower end version by Slice Engineering, the lower performance. And yet it's a knockoff of the high performance version from Slice Engineering. So there's clearly more to Slice's products than just the shape of them. It's all about the materials and the construction. And these are just such amazing performing hot ends. And the fact that this looks like it should perform every bit as good and it just doesn't tells you how important it is to get all the little details right like Slice does. Ah, whoop, there it is. Patent infringement for sure and they know it. And you, you know how I know they know it? They're trying to obfuscate and hide the fact that this is a knockoff of the Mosquito by putting a tiny little cooling hole right there so you can't tell exactly what's going on behind the case. See, what's the point in having this giant copper heat sink up here if you're just gonna block all the air from getting to it with this hole? And the whole point of this tiny little hole and these little vents like that is to make it so that in the listing, whoever it is there at Slice Engineering that's you know hunting for patent infringers and, and reporting them to the customs agents or whatever, however that works, but they can't tell that this is patent infringement just by looking at the pictures because they can't see this um, you know copper heat sink. So that's just cheating. And they know they're cheating and they're trying to hide their cheating. So shame on you, China, shame on you. And not only are you cheating, so all of you out there who are like, oh, I wanna get a cheap version of a slice. Slice engineering hot ends are too expensive. Well, you pay for what you get. This thing does not perform. Let's see if this heat sink is even copper like they claim. So that should be a chrome plating on copper, and if I scratch that, we should get to uh, copper underneath there. Nope, nothing. Look at that, guys. Oh, maybe way down in there. I'm seeing a small bit of copper coloration in there, but not much. You guys, that's just barely copper colored. So either that's a super thick plating or something, something hinky's going on here. I hate to damage my slice engineering product here, but let's just do it. Yeah, see how much more copperish that looks? And that scratched a whole lot easier as well, so it's softer, which um, indicates it's more copper as well. So, I don't know guys, I scratched on both of these a little bit more, and they both seem to have a similar uh, color to them. So it looks like they both are made out of copper. I think the plating on the Chinese one is just going to be a lot thicker 
than the, the slice engineering version. This was like buttery smooth, super easy to scratch. This one took a lot more effort. I can't really tell for certain. My eyeballs have not really been calibrated for mass spectrometry. I'm gonna guess that that is actually copper like they're claiming with just a very thick electroplating on top of it. Ah, maybe it's this. The very thick electroplating on this is also here inside the hole for the, um, for the, the heater element to go into. So this coating could be insulating the heater element from the copper. So they should have reamed out that hole after the electroplating process so that we had fantastic um, heat transfer from copper to the heating element. Something else lending credence to that electroplating process being the culprit is the fact that I can't get this heating, or I'm sorry, the uh, thermistor element into the hole there. That's a standard sized thermistor hole and yet this um, cartridge does not slide in there. So the electroplating is just way too thick and that could be the source of all the problems. So one little quality control issue leads to massive problems. You can't get the right heating element in there. You don't get the right heat transfer. So your flow rate isn't as good. All because whoever was in charge of electroplating left it in the bath for too long. So in the end, this metal gear and this silicone spacer are the only two redeeming features of this otherwise substandard extruder hot end combination. Now, if you really wanna make this work, it looks like uh, you might be able to adapt the mosquito hot end, the hot block and nozzle, all that onto the end of this. The four posts appear to have uh, similar spacing enough to where, yeah, you might be able to get that to work. But I wouldn't hold my breath because the stainless steel tubing there is significantly thicker. The wall thickness and the overall thickness is thicker than here on the, uh, on the slice engineering mosquito. So yeah, this is gonna be superior in every way. Just buy a mosquito, don't buy the knockoff. If you actually have them side by side, the, the, the differences are night and day and you'll regret your purchase. But I guess if you just buy this, you'll never know the difference, so. I don't know how much longer you'll be able to get your hands on these though, because my suspicion is after I release this video, the folks at Slice will now be aware of yet one more patent infringer coming from China and these will be harder to come by. By the way, don't you guys dare leave any hate for Slice Engineering for rightfully prosecuting their patent, okay? These guys came up with just an amazing leap. This made my jaw drop open when I first understood the thinking and the engineering that went into this. This was a tremendous leap. It's not an iterative, step-by-step, -step, small improvement. The leap of logic and the tremendous functionality that is encased in this whole design is just phenomenal. You cannot hate on the people who came up with this for wanting to protect the value that they provided to the community. Just pay the money and buy the right product, you guys. I haven't mentioned the stepper motor on the back of the extruder yet. It's a standard NEMA 17 sized pancake stepper motor and that should have more power, significantly more power to it than the LDO, really tiny stepper motor here on the back of the NF Sunrise or how about the um, NEMA 14 stepper motor on the back of the BQH2 extruder. And yet both of these two extruders were able to extrude at a higher feed rate with less power, yet more feed rate? Mm, that doesn't make sense. And that just speaks to how poor the quality is of this knockoff, um, what is it? The knockoff of the Slice Engineering Mosquito Hot End. So <clears throat> yeah, this is a smaller shop that's making this, clearly not the same company that's making all those other Chinese extruders that I've been reviewing. Uh, the packaging that it came with came, uh, like there was no brand names on it or anything like that. And in fact, the listing for it on AliExpress calls this the all metal extruder hot end for Ender 3, CR10, Prusa i3, Mark 3, Alphawise extruder, high temperature printer head adapter. But the store that's selling this is San Creality. So here's our San Creality. Well, they're even knocking off their name. It's a knockoff of the Creality. We all know Creality, Ender 3 and all that. So uh, yeah, this is um, kind of ridiculous. So the, the, the branding they're trying to knock off, every bit about this, but they combine so many great elements. I just, they're, they're that close. They're so close to being able to come up with their own thing. They just need to wipe the drawing board clean now that they understand, whoever the designer is on this, now that they understand all of um, what goes into making a good extruder, just start from scratch, design your own, right? Don't copy anybody else's dimensions, just start with a blank sheet of paper and you can make something cool 
Metal Gears, all these kinds of things, these wins. You can make something that I could really get behind. But this piece of junk that's a copycat, it's not something that anybody can get behind. And if it wasn't from China, I would be returning it. So there's that higher standard that we expect. By the way, when we gripe about Western-made products, well, you can return them. Try returning stuff to China. It's such a pain in the butt. You oftentimes lose your money. So, yeah, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support this channel, you can always hop on over to Patreon. Link in the description down below. Have a great day. See you in the next one.